Okay, this is a walkthrough of replacing a one-line bash script with a 74-line Go program, mostly for the learning experience, uh, but also it does a couple of things that the bash script didn't do, including logging and deleting empty directories. So, first we'll look at the bash script. And I keep in my home folder a directory called temp and that is the default download folder in my web browser so when I download stupid stuff throughout the day if I want to keep it I move it to my downloads folder but if I don't I don't have to plow through tons of junk to see if there's anything I care about on a regular basis or more likely just let a bunch of stuff I don't care about accumulate because I'm afraid I'm gonna miss something so this script just does find in the folder for anything over 90 days old and deletes it. It's basic bash. Now let's head over to the Go version. No syntax highlighting, so I apologize and I have a uh, funky huge font for the purposes of the video. Um, package main, that's just standard. Import flag, that's for the command line arguments, fumpt, which is string formatting, iOutil, which is for things like reading and writing uh, to and from files, log, which is the log module, OS, which is being used for opening a file handle, file path, which does things like join strings to make a path, and time that we use to calculate uh, the delta between two times and decide if something's old enough. So our three global variables are path, which is, for example, in my case, the temp folder. Number of days old something has to be to delete. And I added a test boolean that can be passed to the command line, and that's handy because it will just log to standard error what it would do but not actually do anything and of course it has the added benefit of letting you run it on directories where you really don't want to delete something but you just want to kind of see what it would have done All right. is dear takes a string and returns a boolean and that will tell you if a given string represents a directory as opposed to a regular file init in go runs first before main and see if it all fits on the screen. Not quite. All right. So, simple basic use of the flag module. I declare a string var for path. If you put dash p, that's what will activate. That's what tells it what the path is. The default is no path and the help text. Days is an int var, a pointer to the days global variable. It's a dash d. It defaults to negative 1 and test which defaults to false. Flag.parse, just basic usage of the flag package. If afterwards a path is blank, log an error and quit. If we get this far, then we have a path, so we check to see if it's a directory. If it's not, then we quit. If the days is less than one, we log a big long message about how this is for your own protection so hopefully you don't do something stupid you can't leave it blank and set up logging so everything passed here I don't want to do if it's if test is true so if test I print it in test mode and I'm not going to delete anything and I just return let everything else that's been done above be it otherwise I create a log file which is fumpt dot s printf which returns a string instead of printing to the screen or file with this purge underscore and then a string dot log and it takes time dot now and it formats it year 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 dash month month dash day day dash 24 hour minute second the log path is file path dot join os.tempdir, which would return slash temp, 
but we don't need to assume that, and the log file name that was created in the line above. And that could be done just by concatenating these two things with a forward slash, but this is just a more technically correct way to do it. Then we create the log file as a file. If there's an error, we blow up. Otherwise, we set the output to the writer. By default, all log messages go to standard error. So doing this will allow it to go to a file because this is going to be run by cron and I'm not going to see the standard output unless, of course, we've uh, set it up for uh, testing, if test, in which case it'll spit out the standard output. That's just to prevent me from having to run it and then go do a directory listing and cat the latest file. Okay. Next is Walker, which is a function that implements the filepath.walk func. So there is a walk function that requires you to pass it a walk func. And it means any function that accepts these three things. A path, which is a string. Info, which is an os.fileinfo object, which has certain properties. And an error, and returns an error. So that's what I've implemented. Cutoff, comma, error, is time.parseDuration. And again, I do sprintf to return a string. And percent %d, h for hours, days times 24. So if days passed here was 90. 90 times 24 hours would be the number of hours that I need. And that would return a number h. And the parse duration function does not accept anything longer than hours. They don't accept days or anything. So we have to go with hours. And so this will basically return, you know, for example, 200h or whatever. Parse duration could fail because maybe I could give it bad data. So it does return an error. So we will check the error. And if it blows up, we quit. Otherwise, we take time.now when the script is running, when the program is running, dot sub, which is subtract, info dot mod time. So this OS dot file info that was passed in, one of its methods is mod time, which also returns a, a time. So time dot now being a time has a dot sub for subtract. That's going to return a duration. So I can compare that duration to cutoff, which I've already set based on you know, the command line dash D flag. Next, so right here, if it's too new, we just, we're just going to return nil. Get out. Next, if the thing is a dictionary, or sorry, directory, we will check to see how many files it has, and if it has any files, we're going to quit. Otherwise, we'll delete it. So, the way we do that is with ioutil. It has a read dir, which returns a slice of all the files in that directory. If it blows up, we log fatal. Always, any function that returns an error, always check the error. If there are more than zero files, log that we're going to skip it, even though it was old enough to delete on its own, because you can have new stuff in an old directory, and return. Otherwise, this print statement is really unnecessary, but I put it in for testing. And then here, whether it's a directory or a file, we're going to log that we're going to delete it. And then if we're not in test mode, we'll actually delete it and return nil. And then main, which is what gets kicked off when the program's actually executed, all it does is call filepath.walk. So that's the entire program. And it replaces a one-line bash script, but I think it does a bit more. And it was fun to write and worth the educational experience.